Are you a woodworker who's been considering launching an Etsy shop? If you're like me, you've probably been considering it for a while but weren't really sure where to start. In today's video, I'm going to show you the eight steps that you need to follow to start your woodworking Etsy shop. Let's do it. Before you even create an account with Etsy, it's important to gain an understanding of what items you want to sell. As a woodworker, the possibilities are endless as to what you can create, but keep in mind that it really only takes one or two items to launch your shop into success, so take some time up front to figure out what those one or two items will be. One of my biggest expenses when selling on Etsy is shipping. Once you've determined what items you want to sell, I highly recommend you spend some time thinking about the overall dimensions of your items and how you're going to ship them. Another recommendation I'll make here is when you're looking at your dimensions, try to plan your design so that they'll fit into a USPS priority mail shipping box. Why do I recommend this? Well, you can actually go to USPS.com and you can order these shipping boxes for free and they will mail them directly to your door. You're not going to find a better deal when it comes to shipping. Etsy offers a price your postage tool that you can utilize to experiment with different dimensions to see what size your items need to be to ship at the cheapest rates. You can also view the USPS flat shipping rates from this page. For any new item I post, I'll utilize this page to determine if a flat rate box is my cheapest option or if I can adjust my dimensions to get an even cheaper rate. Once you've ironed out all your dimensions and you know how you're going to ship your items, the next step in the process is determining how you're going to batch out your builds. And what I mean by this is what processes are you going to put in place to allow you to build 5, 10, 20, even 50 of these items at a time. As you continue to grow your shop, having these processes in place will save you a ton of time in the long run. With thousands of shops on Etsy, it's really important that you do whatever you can to make your shop stand out. An easy way to do this is to build a strong brand image, looking at things like your logo and your shop banner. I recommend using Canva.com to do this. It's free to join and they have a ton of templates to help you design your logo and brand images. You can always pay a professional to help design your logo, but with so many free resources out there, I recommend giving this a try first and if you don't like the way it looks, then seek some help. But as you can see here, there are a ton of free templates you can check out to start to build your brand image. I know, I know, we haven't even created an Etsy account yet. What the heck is going on here? But trust me, taking these steps first will help to ensure that you're setting yourself up for success. Now right along the same lines of your logo and your brand image, you wanna make sure that you're taking some time to take excellent product photos. Now you can accomplish this with just a smartphone, but if you have access to a nicer camera or know somebody who does that you can borrow it from, I highly recommend that you do that. Lighting is key for these photos. I use an Inkletech ring light to help brighten up my settings. Pay close attention to what you have in the background of your images, and if you're building products that people will use, take some photos of people actually using them. It's a perfect opportunity to have your wife or husband give modeling a go. All right, now it's time to go and actually create your Etsy account. Now the beauty of Etsy is there's no fee to get started. They do offer a premium account for $10 a month, but I don't recommend you use this as you're just getting started. There's a link down in the description. If you use that link to sign up, you'll get your first 40 listings for free. In the title of your listing, I recommend including a combination of several keywords. An example of this is my floating succulent shelves. If you look at my title, I title them floating shelf, hanging plant shelf, succulent shelves, free shipping. All of these are keywords that somebody might type into a search bar if they're looking for this specific item. Reuse these keywords in as natural and frequent a way as you can throughout your description. Try to capture a quick overview of what your product is in the first few sentences. Be sure to include every possible detail regarding your item within the description. Leave nothing to chance. Buyers will surprise you with a wide variety of questions regarding your listing. If you can get ahead of those questions and include them in your description, that will help drive sales. 
Tags are essentially keywords that Etsy uses to determine what items to show customers when they search for things. There's a lot of resources out there to help you come up with tags for your items. I personally have used a site called marmalade.com, but this is something you can figure out yourself. For pricing, I recommend taking some time to research what your competition is pricing similar items. If your item is 100% unique, that is fantastic, but odds are there's something pretty similar to your item on the site that you can reference when pricing your items. You'll also want to take some time to consider your profit margins when pricing your item. To calculate your profit margins, you'll need to figure out what all of your costs are, and keep in mind this does include your materials as well as the fees Etsy charges you. There's a link in the description to Etsy's fee structure, but to summarize, Etsy charges you 20 cents per listing and takes a 5% transaction fee, plus a 2.9% and 30 cents per transaction fee for credit card processing. To make this easier to understand, simply take 8% of the price you're charging plus 50 cents, and that's how much of the total purchase price Etsy will take from each of your sales. I recommend offering free shipping on all of your items. Just factor this cost into your overall pricing strategy. The reason I recommend this is Etsy ranks items with free shipping higher as customers prefer to purchase items with free shipping. It's not the end of the world if you can't make this work for what you're selling, but typically you can build this cost into the price to offset the shipping expense. You've heard it a thousand times that the customer is always right. Well, this is especially true on Etsy. You'll come to quickly find out that reviews are keen. A few negative reviews on your profile can drastically impact sales, while a few positive reviews can be exactly what that customer needs to make that buying decision. Take the time to focus on your customer, and I promise you the sales will follow. All right, and there you have it, the eight steps that you need to take to start your Etsy woodworking shop. If you like this video and want to see more content like it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button below, and we'll see you next time.